The first time I ever applied to software roles, I was kind of a mess. I just didn't really know what to expect. I didn't know what the process would be like. In this video today, I'm just gonna be talking about the application and interview process in trying to find a role as a software developer, hoping that maybe it'll help one of you guys out there. Before we get started, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Wix for sponsoring this video. Wix is a user-friendly platform that lets you drag and drop create a website. And that's super useful because maybe you wanna create a portfolio, which we'll talk about in a second. So click on the link below, get started today. The very first step in finding a job in software is the application process. Because, well, companies don't know that you're interested unless you apply. Oftentimes when you do apply to these jobs, yes, you can just go onto their website, drop your resume, fill out a couple of blanks, and then it'll go directly to a recruiter's inbox and you'll hear from them and it'll be happily ever after. But sometimes that's also not the case. Sometimes your resume gets stuck in a black hole somewhere in the world and it seems like it doesn't go anywhere and you just never hear back and you're like, what is going on? So a couple of things that I actually suggest for applying to jobs is to talk to people. Find the recruiter on LinkedIn and try to start a conversation there. Or if you have any friends working at the company, reach out to your friend and ask for a referral. You can also check if you're in college, your job board, websites, and so on, because sometimes those will have dedicated recruiters checking them constantly. In the tech world, cover letters are not as important because a lot of times you'll get the same questions that will be covered through a cover letter during the interviews anyways. Like, why do you wanna work at this company? A lot of companies will not require you to submit a cover letter and you really shouldn't feel obligated to either. The really important part is your resume. On a resume, you just really wanna emphasize that you are qualified for the position. A couple things to cover on your resume include your education. So whether that's, you know, you went to college and you got a degree in computer science, great, list that. But maybe you're a self-taught developer, which I know a lot of you guys out there are. If you do fall under that category, list the courses that you've taken online, such as if you took Free Code Camp's Python course, list that. If you took something on Udemy, on MIT OCW, list those courses. List where you've gotten your qualifications to work as a programmer. Now, if you're on the hunt for a full-time software position, chances are that the company will also be looking for prior experience. If you had any prior experience, such as a job or an internship in software, definitely put that on the resume and have a couple of bullet points explaining the technologies that you worked with, you know, what you did on the job. And I know some of you guys out there might not have official you know, experience. How do I gain experience if every single opportunity needs prior experience, but I don't have any prior experience? But in programming, that's okay. And this is why. When you know how to code, it's very easy to just make your own project. If you've never had any prior experience, I highly suggest just opening up your laptop, coding up your own projects, and then listing those on your resume. And of course, you also want to list your skills, such as Python, JavaScript, C++, SQL, and so on. Typically, a good idea is to actually read the job description that you're applying for and then see what they require. There are always these bullet points in job descriptions, such as the ideal candidate is proficient in Python and is familiar with AWS. You wanna really tailor your resume to that description in order to have the best shot possible at landing an interview for that job. Now, your resume is just a sheet of paper. And if you haven't had more than 10 plus years of experience, it's most likely a one page, one sided piece of paper. So how do you really, really stand out? Especially if you've done a ton of cool projects that you want to show them that don't fit on one piece of paper. Recruiters these days will check your LinkedIn, GitHub, your online portfolio. And so to really stand out as an applicant, I highly suggest creating your own online portfolio with the projects that you've done in the past. And this will not only bring a little bit of life into you as an applicant, but it'll also allow you to showcase your projects in much more detail than you can on a resume. And plus, 
you can link it straight to the code and they can take a look at that and be like, wow, this is incredible. I actually created my own online portfolio using Wix and it looks like this. Here I just have a little bio about myself and a couple of other random facts that just make me you know, more of a person. And then I have a tab for projects, which I basically just list a couple of my favorite projects and I go into detail explaining what exactly these projects were for. And maybe I have a picture or a link or something to the project. I also included my resume on here. So I have my education and my work experience. The best part of using Wix to create my portfolio is that it looks super nice and professional. On top of that, it saves me so much time from having to deal with messy CSS and HTML. Instead, with Wix, I can just go onto the platform, click create a new site, tell them that I want to do a portfolio slash CV style website, choose a template that I like out of all the ones that you see here, which are all really great, Go in and edit that. So here, for example, I can just double click and change my name, Kylie Ying, and create my portfolio that way. It just saves me so much time that I could spend towards other, you know, more interesting projects that I would rather be doing. All right, so let's say that you've successfully applied to a job, you've heard back from the recruiter, and they want to proceed. So what comes next? Now comes the interviews. Ooh, scary. No! No! So let's talk about what you might see during the interview process for a software position. The first round of interviews is typically either a coding challenge or a phone screen. The coding challenge is typically a hacker rank of some sort where the company comes up with a couple of questions and you just have to write some code, pass the test cases, and submit it. With coding challenges, I think that the purpose is just to weed out people who don't really know how to code because believe it or not, there are people who apply to these software positions who don't really know software. Other times you might also have a recruiter asking to schedule a phone interview. And typically these introductory phone interviews, I would say land in two categories. The first category is just super broad, things like why do you want to work here, looking over your resume, asking you about yourself, the classes that you took, the projects that you've worked on, the technologies that you've worked with, and so on. Now, it's super important to not lie on your resume because of this step. I mean, it, it's, it's important to just not lie in general, I think. They'll be kind of able to tell if you are lying about a project because they'll want you to talk about it in detail. The second category of phone interview might be just a plain old technical interview. It'll be talking to an engineer and they'll be asking you questions about algorithms such as sorting or maybe data structures, binary search trees, heaps, um, link lists, etc. And maybe just run times associated with different algorithms and different data structures. So. Be sure to know all of these things. You might want to have a sheet of paper and a pencil in front of you so you can just jot down some notes and express your thoughts on paper as you go. All right, let's say you make it past this round of interviews. Woo! What comes next? Sometimes the company might ask you to just do another technical interview. And so this will be on the phone or maybe even through a video call, but it'll just be the same thing that we just talked about. All of those algorithms, data structures, runtimes, Finally, we have the final round interview. Sometimes these are also referred to as super days. If you are still in the running at this point, you gotta give yourself a little pat on the back because you have passed not only the initial application screen, but also the phone screens, whatever technical screens that they've given you. You are here and you are in the running to land a job as a software engineer. Woo! Okay. Let's talk about these super days because they can be super intimidating. In my previous experiences, super days can last for like three to five hours. And you'll probably be scheduled to talk to three to four different engineers that are on the team you might be working for. These interviews will probably be mostly technical. So they'll be asking more about algorithms, data structures. They might give you a problem and be like, 
you know, if you had an array of this and that, how do you do this? And you'll have to come up with an algorithm and maybe write up some pseudocode or some real code to just show that you know how to implement something and solve a problem from start to end. You also might get asked some questions that there are no answers and they just want to see how you think. There are some questions that are too big for just a 40 minute interview. But in those cases, they just want to know, you know, how these gears turn and how you approach problems and so on. You also might get a behavioral interview in there as well. So during this behavioral interview, these are the ones that I struggle the most with, but they'll ask you questions like, tell me about a time you worked on a team or tell me about a time, you know, you ran into a conflict and how you resolved it. Things like that, where they just wanna look for, you know, what type of candidate are you? What type of engineer are you? What type of team player are you? That final round interview is usually the last interview before a company decides to, you know, reject you or to give you an offer, which is super exciting. One note that I did wanna mention is that the whole interview process tends to be somewhat stochastic and, you know, you, you always will run into problems that you might not know how to solve or you might just not be the right fit for the company at this given time. And I just want to say, don't take it personally. You know, we've all experienced rejection and it just wasn't meant to be sometimes. But there are things that you can do to better prepare yourself for these interviews, such as books like Cracking the Coding Interview. Or my friend Keith is doing a couple of like, interview prep questions on his channel, check it out. You can also go onto HackerRank or LeetCode and try to solve these coding challenges yourself. And that'll really help you kind of develop the intuition for algorithms as well as actually coding up the algorithms. And finally, if you can, definitely try to find people to give you mock interviews because I think that a lot of being successful during interviews is just practice and it's being able to talk out loud, think out loud, and the more you see these problems, the better you'll get at them. Another note about interviews is it's not just an interview of them determining if you are a good fit for their company, it's also an opportunity for you to ask whether or not you think you would like the job there. And so it's really an opportunity, think of it as a date, like it's really an opportunity for you and the company to get to know each other and mutually determine whether or not you would be a good fit. After that final round interview, it's always a great idea to just email the recruiter or the engineers that you spoke to, thanking them for their time getting to chat with you and you know, just telling you more about the company. If you have any other questions, this would also be a great time to include those and to just genuinely express interest in the company. If you do get an offer, congratulations, that's awesome. One thing that I would definitely suggest doing though before accepting is to just ask to grab coffee or to chat real fast with your supervisor. And that's just to determine whether or not you guys would be a good fit, to see what their expectations are, what your expectations are, and what their priorities might be. Or, you know, maybe, maybe the supervisor is a workaholic and works from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. and that might not be something that you wanna do. It's good to just get these things sorted out so that you, it's just so that you know who you're working for and what you're getting into. And just keep in mind that the nature of the application process and just everything in this domain is you might apply to 20 companies, hear back from 10, interview with five, and get an offer from two. It do be like that sometimes. But one thing that you can do today to just make you stand out better as an applicant is to click that link below and start creating your own portfolio website using Wix. That's all I have to say about applying and interviewing for software positions, but stick around because I wanna show you guys a little bit more about Wix. If you wanna add a page to your website, you can just click this button right here and they have an add page button at the bottom that you can click. Now this will bring up also a page that has a ton of templates or you can create your own blank page. And all these templates are right here. They all look super nice. It's also very straightforward to just toggle and manage pages. So like here, I can go to my projects page 
And once you have edited text, like how I have here, I've already put in all my text onto this page, you can also add animations. I have the float in option clicked, but animations always just give the page some life and add a little bit more of a professional touch. And yeah, this is just an example of what my projects page looks like. Wix also has contact pages that you can just set up and directly receive messages from. There's no need to deal with any other modules or code to start receiving messages from people who visit your site. It's also highly customizable, so of course they thought of everything. You can add new fields and widgets, you can resize these boxes, again, very customizable. Another really cool feature is the mobile view editing. When I code my own web pages, this step is always literally such a pain. And from there, you can also drag or resize elements as you want. So you don't have to write anything, you know, uh, unlike actually coding your own page, you don't have to write any additional CSS to get everything to go where you want it to. You can just drag and drop. I really hope that this video will help some of you guys out there land a role in software.